far as the water's concerned, it's pretty disgusting in there. Yeah. Hello, welcome to Jerry Motorsport. I'm Jerry. Let's get started. Welcome to the channel. The car is uh, progressing well on its uh, journey back to motorsport. I've done the MOT now, and now we're going to start doing some of the leftover maintenance jobs that we didn't fix at the time of the MOT. I'm, I'm hoping that the flushing of the coolant system will help with a number of things, just it's a routine maintenance item that hasn't been done for a while and needs doing now. Flushing will help with the fact that the fan is very quick to operate on this car, especially when you're running in competition, the fan is nearly always going noisy and it runs after you stop. We're going to check out the thermostat. I think I'm going to order a new thermostat anyway, a relatively cheap item and replace that in any case, just to be sure that that has got a fresh thermostat in and is operating at the correct temperature. Uh, when I run the car up today, I will just check, see what temperature it's running at. First thing to do, drain the water, the old water, flush that through, then apply the flush to the system, top it up with just plain water so that it's not cleaning with dirty water in it, and then move on to flushing that out again giving a good flush through with a hose, try and back flush the radiator and then uh, make sure that's all nice and clean, no residues and then uh, top it up with brand new coolant. Anyway, first things first, drain the water. This uh, thermostat for the fan, I don't like the arrangement that this comes in at the edge. It's always been like that, but I think an in, inline thermometer switch would be a better option for this. So I'll look at some options for that. But at the moment, I'll probably just go back in. Okay, so that's the water drained, quite dirty, and we flushed it with just fresh water and then back flushed the radiator. I was quite surprised how much rusty water came out when we back flushed. So what we need to do now, uh, is um, put the chemical flush into the system, uh, top that up with fresh water, run the engine. Uh, I think it said 10 minutes on the product, so I put that in. So there's a bit of scale in there, and hopefully the chemical flush will remove some of that and improve performance. Now with the chemical flush in, we're just letting the engine run for 10 minutes to run that through the system uh, and then we'll give it a chance to cool down and then drain it off. I was just thinking I should have taken some temperature of the air that comes out of the heater down in the foot well. Um, it's always been efficient and I wondered if it would be even more efficient after this flush. Um, I've just put my hand in it and that air is really hot. Right, I've run the car for a slightly higher rev for a little while just to get the temperature up a bit and it's back to its misfiring and lumpiness that it used to do. Um, it won't really tick over as well, so it's starting to clonk. We've got the ignition warning light coming on. Temperature's right up again. Well, fluctuating oil pressure. Let's give it a little bit of revs. So it'll settle back down again. This is the problem when it gets hot. 
starts to... I had done some work on the carburettors and it, um, it was ticking over a whole lot better. Um, obviously, I've got... Ooh, it's died. Obviously, I've got a bit of work to do in checking the carburettors. Uh, again, just tweaking that tune. Well, that's been a good 25 minutes with the engine running with the chemical flush going round and round. So we're going to turn it off and let it cool down. Right, I've given that more than half hour to cool down. Temperature's pretty low. Still got to be pretty careful not to burn myself. Take the uh, bottom hose off and see what grubbiness comes out. Okay, so that is the chemical flush draining. Let's flush it through. Essentially all we've done is just flush one side there, so I need to back flush through here. So that's nice getting this off. The thermostat's got to come off anyway for the new thermostat. This is the bottom cross connection tube for the radiator. I have to take that off to get the hoses off the bottom of the rail to give it a good flush, but this pipe's not greatest. Bit of a clean up, bit of a paint. As we've cleaned away the paint, we've uh, unearthed a small hole in the pipe. It is actually beyond where the pipe goes, so I could chance it, but I am actually going to fill that hole up before painting it and making sure that is a um, good piece of pipe. So that's the cross water pipe all cleaned up and now we'll get that primed in an anti-rust paint and a nice finish. Something that's clearer on it. And of course, not to forget the heater matrix. Flushing that through. Finally, let's try and back flush the radiator. While we're waiting for paint to dry on the cross tube, I'm just going to tidy up the corrosion on this a little bit, smart it up. Having just successfully uh, tarted this uh, expansion cap up with a bit of paint and looking at the state of this, I think whilst I can't get any more, just to make it look a bit smarter, I'm just going to give it a quick spray of paint. This does need replacing, there's some quite thin parts in it, so we're going to have to keep an eye on this. Possibly a bit too much. Anyway, certainly looks a bit smarter, I think it's just a bit too bright, it's like it's been chromed.
So that's been pretty successful. The water came out uh, pretty dirty from giving it the chemical flush that was washed out. Um, we're just waiting to finish off new thermostat, new gasket. We've tidied up the housing for the thermostat and treated the bolts so it all looks a little bit smarter at the same time while we've got things off. And that cross tube, we're waiting for that to dry before we can put it all back together again. So water cross pipe is now uh, fully painted and repaired. That's ready to go back on. Uh, and once it's all filled up, run it up, check for proper operation, make sure we haven't got the airlocks, that sort of thing. Okay, cross tube bolted up back on. Time to get the hoses on. So I've disconnected the hose from the expansion tank, that just needs to be lifted up so that fill up, so we are above the filler point. Fill this as hard as we can, then we've got to put the coolant into the expansion bottle half full, reconnect that hose and we should be done. It's difficult to see when this is half full. Right, that is the engine run. I'll let it cool down now and check the coolant level once it's cold again. We are all done in the water. That's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Yeah.